Today on Maple Street, we are honoring Olivia de Havilland. Not only is it her birthday, but she was also my previous star of the month. What better time to honor her? Olivia de Havilland is a really cool discovery for me. She's someone that I had seen in Gone with the Wind, but never paid too much attention. And she actually stopped me in my tracks last year when I saw her performance in The Heiress. Her performance went on to win my personal award show, The Alfies, for Best Actress in a Leading Performance. Ever since then, I've been wanting to watch more and more of her movies. It was a blast in June honoring her as my star of the month and I actually even set a new record for most movies watched for a star of the month watching 11 movies from her. In total I have seen 16 films from her. I have it on the screen right now which ones qualify to make this list. Now that you know the qualifiers let's get started with my top 10 movies from Olivia de Havilland. <laughs> Starting on the list off at number 10, I have They Died With Their Boots On. Errol Flynn and Olivia de Havilland starred in several movies together. But the one problem I have is I'm going into all these movies for Olivia and I'm getting an Errol Flynn picture. It's like me saying I'm going into Harry Potter to watch Neville and so I'm disappointed because it's about Harry Potter. Like obviously that's not an insult to the movie. And so you'll find that a lot of their movies together actually don't make this list. However, I wanted to include They Died With Their Boots On because I really like the love story that blossoms between the two of them in this movie. The movie is set in the Civil War. It follows General Custer, his story of how he became a general for the US. And funny enough, the parts where he's a general and he's fighting in the war were my least favorite parts of the movie. I really enjoyed the first half of this film, where it's more so about him training. He's a cadet. He's always breaking the rules. He's getting into trouble, but at the same time, he's a good man and you're rooting for him. And then on top of that, it's when he meets Olivia de Havilland's character. They fall in love and it's a really sweet love story. There's also a star performance from Hattie McDaniel, who gives not only a hilarious performance, but just an adorable performance. I love that lady. So I'm ranking this at my number 10, specifically for the first half. Number nine goes to The Snake Pit. This is a very underrated movie when it comes to someone living in a psych ward. It's a bit melodramatic. You see Olivia's face as she's thinking things and it just comes off as a little cheesy. However, looking past the cheese there, she gives an incredible performance. She received a very well-deserved Oscar nomination for this movie. There are scenes where she is just screaming and terrifying terror and confusion and she sells it. I was watching it and I was asking myself how was this movie made in the 40s? This feels like a modern day performance but overall this is a very underrated movie and I'm not sure why it's not talked about more. I was a big fan of the ending as well. It's a strong picture with a terrifying theme which affects us all. That's why I urge adult responsible people to see Lady in a Cage. You will be shocked, you will be terrified and fascinated. So I caution you do not see it alone. Number eight goes to Lady in a Cage. I'm kind of shocked with myself for even having this in the top 10. When I saw this movie, I was very disturbed. It is a movie that does not hold back. I would even call it more psychotic than psycho. It's just very disturbing and unsettling. Basically, you have Olivia's character who is recovering from a recent surgery that she had. And because of that, she has to use an elevator to get from the first floor to the second floor. It's one of those nightmare sequences that you never think could happen, but it happens when she's using the elevator one day and the power goes off. Well, she's not quite at the second floor and she's too high above the first floor to get out. On top of that, she has a fear of heights and so she can't just jump out even if she wanted to. And then what makes things worse is she's already stranded there and then some hoodlums come and start robbing her house. And suddenly, before you realize it, you're watching a home invasion movie. It's also James Cann's debut in a movie and he does a phenomenal job, like a little too good, I would say. His buddy in the film played by Raphael Campos, also does a great job. They all just look so psychotic and scary. I was very disturbed by it in the sense that this is realistic, this could actually happen. But the reason it makes my ranking is because although I was disturbed while watching it and I was kind of like, okay, I think this is a one-time watch for me kind of thing, I can't stop thinking about it. It has so many good things to say about society. There are plenty of opportunities where Olivia's character could be saved from the situation, but because society isn't paying attention to their surroundings and they're just moving on with their day, she's not. I'm not going to spoil how the movie ends or anything, but there are just those little instances where you're screaming at your TV in frustration saying, listen to her, save her, you could save her right now. And it doesn't happen. So it's very frustrating. 
but really good too. And it has a lot to say about society's distraction with their own personal agenda. And so for that, I had to include it in the top 10 and I highly recommend you watch it, especially if you're looking for movies to watch in October. Number seven goes to The Strawberry Blonde. It stars James Cagney and of course, Olivia. It also has Rita Hayworth in it and she's kind of a pivotal part in the movie too. Basically, James Cagney is infatuated with Rita Hayworth, but because he can't have her, he goes to his next best option, which is Olivia. If you ask me, Olivia's the best option, but he sticks with Olivia and I really like this movie for Olivia de Havilland. James James Cagney's character for me was a bit dislikable. There are certain scenes that happen and I'm just like, that's not okay. But Olivia, on the other hand, is very flirtatious, very pretty in this movie and kind of like a snake pit, although she's giving a completely different performance, at times it feels like it's a modern day performance. I'm taken out of this black and white realm and it's almost like, they've inserted a modern actress into a black and white film. And that's one of the highest compliments I could give an old movie. It's just a sweet romantic film. It's nothing mind blowing, but it's an enjoyable enough film and I would recommend it. Number six goes to The Dark Mirror. The movie follows two sisters. They are twins, identical twins, both played by Olivia, of course. One is potentially accused of murder, but the other one won't confess her sister did it. And so they both act innocent the whole time and you don't know which sister is actually guilty because they're identical. So you can't identify which one was at the scene of the crime and which one had nothing to do with the crime. It's a pretty interesting premise on its own, but what really sells it is Olivia's performance, playing two different characters and also such opposite characters. One is the more rebellious sister and one is the more respectful sister. And so seeing her play two performances like that was just a treat for me. And also I've got to say, Olivia is just really good at playing the villain. I've seen several movies with her now where she's the villain and I, I can't believe how good she is at selling that because I'm always rooting for her as a hero, but when she's a villain, I'm like low-key rooting for her then too. Kicking off my top five, we have probably her most well-known film, The Adventures of Robin Hood. This goes back to what I was saying about Olivia and Errol pairings where the movies that they're in together, they're great, but they really are Errol Flynn movies. And so for a top 10 Olivia de Havilland ranking, it's not gonna be at the top of my list, obviously. And with all that being said, I could rank it even lower on the list because there are plenty of leading performances that made it below this one, but it's just hard to dislike this movie. I want it to be in my top five because it's just an enjoyable, adventurous tale. It's very colorful. The sets look so great. Errol Flynn gives a great performance as Robin Hood. Olivia gives a great performance as Marion. It was also fun seeing Claude Rains in the Prince John role, Eugene Pallet as Friar Tuck, and Alan Hale as Little John. I really liked the cast and I just liked the story of it, even though I know the story perfectly well, it was still enjoyable and I was very impressed that this movie looked as good as it did coming from the 30s. Coming in at number four, I have To Each His Own. We're back in the starring roles for Olivia and this one especially is a highlight of her career because it's one of two Oscars she won for Best Actress, which makes sense. I don't wanna go into spoilers, but a summed up version, Olivia falls in love with a soldier. They have a kid together, except it is out of wedlock. And so she doesn't want the public to know about this kid. And so she has this scheme set up where the nurse at the hospital is gonna drop this kid off on the front doorstep of a family she knows. And then she's gonna and come by save the day and say oh my goodness I could watch this kid I've always wanted a kid kind of thing and no one would know that it's actually her kid however after one thing goes wrong she ends up losing the kid to another family and basically she has to watch from the sidelines her child grow up his whole life the reason she can't come out and say that it's her kid is because it was a kid born out of wedlock and therefore society would always look down on him and Olivia and so with that plot it's a very sad movie it's frustrating too you just want her to have her kid back and it's so sad to see. The movie begins in present day where Olivia is older, she's living alone and everything. And then it goes back in time and tells her story of her kid and everything. And then it cuts back to the future. And I think that that's part of the reason Olivia was able to win the Oscar because she's not only acting for a younger character, but an older version of that character. And either time she's doing it, she does a great job. It has a very sweet ending. I had a big smile on my face. And I think that's part of the reason it ranks so high on my list. I mean, the whole movie is good and it's frustrating. I was definitely very engaged with it, but the ending really sold it for me. Coming in at number three, I have Hush Hush, Sweet Charlotte. It's directed by Robert Aldrich, the same one who directed Whatever Happened to Baby Jane. And it's 
clear too. Like both movies, they feel like sister films to each other. Olivia gives a very layered performance here. She plays the sister of Betty Davis. Betty Davis has always been known as the crazy woman who lives in this big house all alone. Olivia's character is coming to Betty Davis to help her sell the home and move on from the estate that she's been living in her whole life. But there's a dark secret from the past that plagues Betty Davis. As the movie progresses, the mystery unfolds, answers are revealed, and it's just a very engaging watch that had me very alert and intrigued of what would happen. I can't wait to watch this again and I am shocked that we don't have an official Blu-ray release for it. Like, get on it, please! Coming in at number two is Gone with the Wind. If The Adventures of Robin Hood isn't her most popular film, I would say this one is. Gone with the Wind is just a masterpiece. I had a chance to see it in theaters two years ago and I was floored by it. It went from a good movie to a perfect movie. To this day, I would say it's one of the biggest movies ever made. So much hard work went into it. I'm not really talking about Olivia de Havilland's character too much, and that's mostly because I didn't know her too well when I saw Gone with the Wind, but I honestly need to rewatch it and focus on Melanie when I do. I love this movie, I love the icon that it is, the poster is beautiful, the story is beautiful, the characters, the costume design, the sets, the cinematography, the beautiful color, it's all so great. Gone with the Wind is my number two. Coming in at number one, if you haven't guessed it already, it is The Heiress. Of the 16 movies I've seen from Olivia, this is my favorite performance and I think the best performance. Olivia de Havilland plays Catherine Sloper. She's the daughter of a very wealthy man. She has not yet married and that's when Montgomery Cliff comes in. It's a very interesting movie because it plays as a romance, but there's also definitely mystery as well. The whole movie you're wondering, is he falling in love with her for her because he loves who she is or is he falling in love with her because because she has a great inheritance coming and he knows that she has a ton of money. And the movie does a great job at not selling you on one or the other. There are great points for both sides where you're like, well, I think he does love her, but this, and then you'll think, well, I think he is going for the money, but this. So it's a very good movie and very well constructed. The ending is incredible. I love the ending so much. And it's a perfect example of a movie from back in the day with a strong female lead, which is few and far in between, at least from what I've seen. I wish that I had seen more. And so if there are more, please recommend them to me. But this one is a perfect example, kind of my prime example when it comes to that. Olivia de Havilland has quickly risen to be one of my favorite actresses of all time. I know I've only seen 16 movies, so I would love for you to recommend more in the comments below. Please also share your rankings, your favorite movies, your least favorites, whatever you want to do. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you next time on Maple Street.